So if you've tried to adjust your torque wrench and it's not adjusting at all, most likely what's happening is the clicking mechanism on the inside is all dried up with grease. So let's take this apart and get this thing working again. So the first thing I'm gonna do to take this apart is I'm gonna take off the little clip that comes on here. I'm not gonna film it because it's super difficult to take off. So you have a little C-clip that goes on the front of this. Now the best way to get these off is to get a pair of these. It's got little points at the end. You stick them into the little holes and then you squeeze it and it separates it out and you push it. It's so much easier. If you want a pair of these, I'll link some down below. Super helpful for these, any sort of C-clips on your car. So once this is out, then this little pin that keeps this in place, you take this out, put it off to the side, and this whole portion on the inside will now come out. There we go. And this here on the bottom, this little roller, that's one side that it's going to be rolling on. Now this one doesn't really have to spin at all. Actually, I don't think it's supposed to. This isn't the part that clicks. You've got little ball bearings in here which slide in and out. And if you look over here, you've got the flat side and the hex screw side in here. Um, by having that, you know, tightening and loosening it up against the side, you can change the adjustment that way. So we can set this off to the side. We don't need that anymore. Now we can get to the main piece here. Now all the way down at the bottom, you're going to have your little locking mechanism and the handle. What you need to do is you need to take off this portion right here. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to put some pliers on one end, hold that, and I'm going to get my pipe wrench on the other end. And we're going to loosen that up so this can come out. Go in, go in, go in. There you go. So that cap is now off. Set that off to the side. Now what we're going to have to do is separate this threaded portion from the handle. So we're going to back this out as much as we can. And that, that came out. If you need to, you can move the handle forward by tightening it to get this further out if it does stick. So now to get this portion out, you're going to turn it until you see this. That is a little hex screw. So we're going to grab our itty bitty little hex screw and let me check. I believe this is a 5 64ths hex screw. Now this little thing is keeping in the very end of your locking mechanism. So we're going to back this out. Now you don't have to back this out all the way but you can if you want to. It's not that bad putting it back in. Just have to make sure you double, don't double thread it. So there it is. Just a little hex. So we'll loosen this up. There it goes. And that's how it's going to come out. There you go. You're going to have two little pins here where things do fall out. Let me grab this. Yeah, they do fall out. There's nothing keeping them in place except for when it's in there and it's actually bunched in. As long as you keep it like this, they won't fall through if you have this on the bottom. So I'm going to set it off to the side like this. We don't have to worry about the end. And now we can take the handle off. So much twisting. And there you go. There is the handle. And now what we need to do is you see this moving. You have the little pin in there. Just take some needle nose. And we're going to fish in there. 
Uh, these noodle nose are too big. What we're going to do is we're just going to fish in here. And we're going to grab this little pin out. There it is. Don't lose it, obviously. Set that off to the side. And now we can take this little plunger doohickey. Sorry, I don't know the names of any of this stuff. We're going to set that off to the side, and now we can get the spring out. And last, but not least, the only thing that I'm actually in here for, see that? You don't see light on the other ends because we still have one more thing in there. So, aha, there we go. Just by that not falling out, I have a feeling this grease is bad. A little on the thick side. So this is your little clicking mechanism right here. Now, if I grab the other side, this is the part that actually goes in. These have pressure on each other, and then when it finally gives to a certain whatever foot-pounds of pressure, it'll go floop against each other. That's right. Floop. And that's what makes the clicking. And it's usually the grease that's in here that makes this not want to move. And this is moving now a little bit better now that I've been turning it. Um, so if you do want to, clean this out, re-grease it, and these little ball bearings here on the top will fall out. There's nothing keeping them in now that it's out. So if you want to, you can grab these and take them out. Uh, I got little chunks of metal coming out of this thing. All right, so if you guys want to take this apart, there is a pin that goes through this whole thing all the way across. All you need to do is push that out. So grab something that's got a pointy end. And take that out. Now the roller should come out. And it looks like the little... And coerce this guy out. There we go. And here's a little ball bearing. And ball bearing number two. There we go. Yeah, this stuff is... It's okay, but it is kind of sticky. And especially if you haven't used yours in a long time, this stuff might get gummed up. So I'm going to clean out all this on the inside, and I'm going to use my ball bearing grease, which is nice and fresh, and it doesn't look all gross like this. Pretty much cleaned out all of the old grease, and now I have new grease in there. Leaving all that stuff out. Let's push this pin back in. It's going to be a little difficult because I can't see anything. Ooh, there it goes. All right, so the pin is back in. I have the ball bearings in their little notch. I'm going to grease up the outside. Everything's filled with grease. Now we need to put this in. Now, the hard part about this is positioning it in the correct position. Then you're going to put it in here, and you're going to slide it all the way down. And basically what you have to do is you have to look in this end. can't really show you right now because I'm greasy. You're going to have to look down that end to see if this, so it's going to look like this when it's all back together. So a good way to remember is the ball bearings need to go towards the adjustment window right here where it would uh, usually be. So this needs to go in like this. It needs to come all the way through to the end. Okay, so ball bearings right here up against where that hole is. So we're going to set that in like that. There we go. Now you can kind of see it right there. We'll push that in a little bit. Got to grab the spring. 
Now, the spring goes back in. Throw a little bit of lubrication on this thing, too. And then that's being pushed back in. And now we are going to grab the little plunger thing, flat side in towards it this way. And see that little, there's a little hole, this one right here. So make sure you put it in like that. The little hole, you're going to see through the little window here. And that's where that pin went. So we're going to put that pin right back in. <laughs> go pins back in so this is locked in place where it's at okay plungers in locked into place now the handle goes back in Let's twist in a bit and we're gonna get our assembly next gotta twist this in see a little bit better. Now you're just twisting the bottom portion of this until it's nice and tight so you can pull it through one mechanism just like this and then you're gonna pull this out and you're going to see where that little hex went, little hex screw. So we're gonna put this in to lock in the locking mechanism. All right, once you feel resistance, just back it off just a little bit, because if you put too much resistance, you're not going to be able to turn this. So I can turn it, it backs off, it goes back in, that's exactly where you want it. All right, going to push this back in, and let's get this threaded, feels like it's threaded, going to back the handle in a little bit, okay, these are connected. Now we're going to grab the little end piece here. And now the whole lower portion is complete. We find this right up here, that's your adjusting. We grab the top portion, not the little nub side, but the one that actually has the hex key side. That's going to be in there, so that's the way we get ourselves aligned up. Now we're going to have to push the spring down if your handle's up. If not, I mean, my handle's way up, so I'm going to loosen this down. Shouldn't be any resistance on this, so it should be really easy. There we go, all the way back down to zero. Now we're going to come back up to the top, and we're going to put the top portion in. And we also need to put the pin in and the retaining C-clip. And once all of these are back together, you are all done. Well, I hope that helped you guys out with your torque wrench issues. So please subscribe, like, do all the fancy stuff, the bell icon. If you wanted anything in my video, I'll link it down below so you can check it out on Amazon. And if you want to, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I have all those accounts.